Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Brokerpreneur Podcast. <laughs> I am Dr. Ben Spears, <laughs> the king of flow. Maybe I'll be the emperor one of these days. There we go. I <laughs> get the lightsabers out. <laughs> king of, I am the king of flow. Um, which you know it makes it makes sense, but we all know, dude, you're the crown. <laughs> I am the crown, <laughs> the crown royal. <laughs> yeah, you're the crown royal of recruiting. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Matt? I'm um, here with the big guy as usual. I, I, you know, you know who he is. He's the brains behind the operation. Yeah, if you guys are just jumping into this podcast, the whole new king thing, you got to go back and listen to one of the recent podcasts we had about a, a, a about Ben being instead of the ambassador of flow, he's he's been promoted to the king of flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talked about creativity and passion and that kind of thing. It's the one before this one, but you know, yeah. you'll, you'll know I'm, I'm the king of flow. <laughs> it's it's going to stick. I just have a feeling. I'm, a t-shirt's already ordered. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Speaking of flow, lead, yeah. flow, or get out of the way. Oh no, that's follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm not going to let us go there yet, Matt. Uh Oh, here we go. So everybody, you know, everybody, you can't tell, right? Cause I got, I don't have an accent, but I'm from <laughs> Matt looks, just looks out the corner of his eye. What? I'm from home? I'm from Kentucky, right? Right, guys. You know, I I, uh, I I've just recently got got into like you know learning about bourbon, right? And you know, just you know, I'm reading some books, you know, that kind of stuff. That's kind of you know, that's when I say I'm learning about bourbon. I'm the guy I'm out there reading books. Right. I'm like the nerd. I'm like the bourbon nerd. But what I find myself doing, Matt, right? I've got yep. this. I got this cup. It's got ice in it, right? And now all I do now, so I'm gonna take a drink. I just sip my water. I don't even. I don't even <laughs> chug water anymore. <laughs> I've already conditioned my brain. Okay. You just gotta sip. Well, here's the here's the fun part. <laughs> so you might start off by sipping it to appreciate it, but a little time has passed, and pretty soon you're gonna be chugging the bourbon the same way you chug water. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll see about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Matt has already given us a little glimpse into. You know, lead, follow, or get out of the way is kind of what we're talking about. Uh, Matt, give us a little context behind that. I'll let everybody know how to follow us, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. So, uh, so whenever it comes to uh, whenever it comes to your recruiting or you know gaining profitability in your office and everything, of course there has to be a vision and there has to be goals and there and there has to be leadership for all of that, right? Mm -hmm. When you were meeting with with the recruits as the broker or as the recruiter, what were you promising them? Which, yeah. which one of those were you saying that you, which of those roles did you say that you were going to be in? That's what we're going to, that's what we're going to dig into today. Yeah. I like that. I like roles too. Yeah. So guys, whoever you're listening to this or watching it, make sure you hit that follow and that subscribe button. You mean like button. Quincy's big, fast, fat yeast role? Or I was thinking like, like everybody Sister does Schubert. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got Straight you. up. Miss thanks, Vicky's. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Miss Vicky's are incredible. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Right. Those Hawaiian rolls or whatever, oh, those, yeah. are, those are legit too. Like, I little, hear you. We make little sandwiches out of that. Guys, wherever you are, there's no better time than to make one of those little sandwiches. Right now. Right now. <laughs> with some Hawaiian rolls. <laughs> Unless you're working out. I know some of you guys listen when you're working out. Yeah. Wait for the Hawaiian roll till after the workout. Yeah, lunch is just a couple hours away. That's right. People are going to make fun of you if you're on the treadmill eating a Hawaiian <laughs> I, Hawaiian I would rolls. not. Cinnamon roll. They make yeah. fun of you for that. Yeah, you let them know that the king has decreed <laughs> that, that everyone <laughs> shall everyone shall eat, eat Hawaiian roll sandwiches. <laughs> While on the elliptical. <laughs> uh, guys, you know, once you finish that sandwich, go to brokerpreneurpodcast.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. And uh, we'll just send you a bunch of really cool and fun uh, recruiting infotainment in there. And, and it's just our way of, you know, hope uh, uh, adding more value to, to, to your day outside of this podcast. So, Matt, you made, you made a great point there. Um, in, in interviews, in the appointment process, after the hire, it is so easy uh, to find yourself like just promising the world. Yep. Right. Because we all know like um, it's not just the easiest thing. It's just not like the easiest thing for just agents to start walking in the door every single day and just right. saying like I don't I don't need to know about your commission split. I just want to sign up. Right. Right. Just that's that's a rarity. Right. So you have to kind of say this is what I have to offer, and 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 you know they're probably meeting with somebody else. Yep. 
So you're making those you're making those promises, and 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 you and you framed it you know perfectly of what we're going to talk about. It's like, what what did you promise, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and 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 from a leadership standpoint, that's so very important, right? Absolutely. You 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 can't be void of leadership. We all know that, right? Okay. So uh, that's failure. That's failure. That's yep. exactly right. Right. Someone has to be at the helm. Someone has to be. Someone has to be steering. Yep. Now, with that, with that being said, does that person have to be you as the recruiter? Does that person have to be you as the, the broker owner? It, yep. it doesn't have to be, okay? Uh, I believe that you should be someone charting the course, but that doesn't mean that you're the one that has to hold the wheel, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so whenever you're sitting down and you're in, you know, uh, we've talked about democratized authority. Let's touch on that for just a second, right? Okay. So democratized authority is whenever, uh, you know, you're basically breaking up between a group of people who, who's in charge of different pieces and parts and, and stuff, right? We've got, a, we've got another podcast about that. It was a real good one. Right. Yep. So, uh, so most brokerages, that's what they do. Yeah. Right. As soon as a brokerage gets to a certain size, the broker just, you know, one night, you know, goes home, you know, shaking, can barely hold their glass of wine, sets the <laughs> glass down and goes, damn it, I got to have more people helping me out. And they make yeah. that transition. Right. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, you know, so they so they start to delegate, which is not easy. Right. Because, you know, uh, a lot of people that find themselves highly accountable feel like that ultimately that buck has to stop with them on everything that they do. OK. Yeah. Nothing kills your growth quicker than that. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Let me let me put it this way. You're not the only freaking awesome person out there. Yeah. There's a lot of other awesome people out there. Yeah. Yeah. I exist. Right. Ben exists, right? And <laughs> and he's the and he's the king of flow, so you know he's awesome. So there's a lot of other awesome people out there. Yeah. Part of what you have to do is you have to find some of those people and empower some of those people. One of the worst things that you can do is find those people and not empower them. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, really, you, you can't carry everything on your back up to the top of the mountain and just have everybody else with their backs empty following you up there and right. say, I've got a team. Right. Cause the only ones that want to do that are not the ones you want at the top of the mountain with you. <laughs> yeah. They want to say, give me some of that. Let me help. Right. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. So, so, uh, so, you know, lead follower, get out of the way. Right. Yeah. There are some things as a leader that you're just going to have to be in charge of. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to make sure it goes a, a certain way. Yep. You want to promise that in your recruiting meeting. Right. So the, the follow part is there are some things that you're just like, Hey, I, I want you to take the lead on this, but I'm going to support you. I'm right. going to make sure that it's going the way that it needs it. Right. And then there's some get out of the way. Right. And the, and the get out of the way is things that you're not great at. You, you, you point the direction and then you let someone else, you let someone else handle that. Right. Right. So I, you know, I think we can, you know, I think we can say this, but you know, uh, you know, we've got a, you know, we've got, we've got an app coming out for some stuff, right? Okay. Yep. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. It's going to be super killer. It's going to be right. It's going to be awesome. Hey guys, this podcast is powered by Prospect Boomerang. We all know broker owners struggle with profitability. Prospect Boomerang compounds your profits by recruiting the best agents to your brokerage. For consistent growth, visit prospectboomerang.com. So we talked, we just, you know, talked a little bit about leadership. There are different ways to demonstrate leadership within your office. And I want to talk about some of those. You know, I think we have, you know, five or six listed in our show notes. But let's go ahead and start start with the first one here, which is clear communication. And and it's and it's pretty obvious why that would be the first one on um, the right. first first one on the list. I mean, that's that's like leadership one oh one is being able to communicate your vision. Your Absolutely. message and, and, and so forth. Yeah. And, and as a leader, uh, as the, as the person in charge of your, as the person in charge of your office, as the person that is, that is helping make sure things go in a, go in a certain direction, you, you have to make sure that whenever, whenever something is important to everyone, yeah, that, that there's clarity in that message. Yeah. Okay. So, so there can't be something ambiguous in that. Right. Because as soon as things get a little bit off the rails, everyone is going to look to you or whoever is leading and, and in charge of the office. And, and they're going to say, why did it not go the way it's supposed to? Let me, let me not be, you know, let me not be abstract about this. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's say you got to change your commission plan, right? For whatever reason you have to, you have to go with a different commission plan or you're going to implement a transaction fee or you're going to, uh, or you're going to completely change your training instead of it being all uh, live training that you're doing, you're actually going to go to, you know, you're going to purchase some training and go with some uh, VILT training or some on, on demand training. 
if it's not clearly articulated all the reasons why you want to do that, and you have a training director that's in charge of all the training, right? Mm -hmm. You have a manager that's in charge of the office and you're the, the CEO of it. And it doesn't go the way that it's supposed to. Even if you're not the person that's there day to day handling all of that, they're still going to look to you. Gotcha. They're going to say this company did not do this the right way. Yeah. Or, or this company, you know, why did they change the, the, the training? I love the way that the training was before. You have to make sure that you clearly articulate the reason why that's happening. You have to make sure that you clearly articulate expectations and clearly articulate uh, a, a, a response or feedback method, right? Yep. If, you're, if you're excited about this training and you love it, let me know. If you have concerns about this, please reach out to me or the training director and, and, we'll, and we'll dig in deeper of why, you know, why this change was necessary at this point in our growth, right? Yep. So, so you can, uh, but you have to, you have to, you got to communicate that. Yep. If you're not communicating that, you're just going to struggle. And ultimately, it's going to fall on your shoulders. Even if somebody else is leading and you're just following that initiative, because you're the one overall in charge, it's still going to fall to you because you're the broker owner. Yep. No, you're exactly right. And that kind of, you know, that kind of leads us in, into this next one. You know, the first one was all about, you know, how, how your leaders are communicating, um, we'll say, to the followers, right. uh, for, for, lack of better, for lack of better words, but uh, testimonials. Right, you you need that communication coming back. Oh yeah, that's saying like, nah, you, yeah, this they're killing it. Right, right. So let's talk about testimonials. Yeah, so uh, so let's use an example in testimonials for recruiting interviews. Perfect. Okay. All right. So uh, so having a, a uh, and something that's pre-interview, right? Having something that you're going to talk about before the uh, before you actually sit down with the person. So the uh, so pre-interview, you know, you're going to send something out to someone. And it's not going to say, this is why I joined the company. Yeah. Right? So you're not going to, you, you don't have a, you set an appointment, the recruit is coming in, you're not going to send a testimonial out that says, oh my gosh, I joined the company with Matt because it was the greatest thing in the face of the earth. Because what they're thinking at that point was, oh my gosh, what, am I going there to, to join? I mean, we're just, we're just talking, right? Yeah, exactly. What you would do instead is, is talk about the leadership Okay. Yep. So, uh, so, you know, the, the, the interview, the pre-interview, it would be something more along the line of somebody saying, you know, I, I sat down and, you know, I've met with several other brokers, uh, before in the past and before I made a, a transition to this company, you know, I just wanted to explore what some of my options were. When I sat down and had a discussion with Matt, I could immediately tell that the vision for the company was a lot different because it wasn't just about, you know, how they're going to help me make more money. This was really about how I could, how I could live a balanced lifestyle. I was so excited about the interview now that I've joined the now that I decided to join the company there's so many other things that that I realized were whatever right so that yep. that's what's in that pre-interview right? right and and so that is going to help them see what kind of leader you are and that is going to help them understand what to kind of expect on that appointment yeah okay post appointment the thing that would make the most sense in in my opinion is post appointment you have somebody else uh, Your say, opinion's the only one that matters for for here right now, right? right. And I appreciate that coming yeah, from the king. Yeah, I mean, I have decreed. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm using that word right. It's just funny. <laughs> it's just a fun king word to use. Right. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta get one of those little trumpets. Yeah, before yeah, you start exactly. talking. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, as far as post interview, what we would want to do is we would want to have something that that is someone that has went through the interview and is talking about what it was that happened in the interview. And then there's continuity between it. So, so as an example, you have your four interview pillars, right? And, and, uh, and you, and you've got somebody that says, you know, uh, you know, I, I sat down with, uh, I sat down with, with Matt and, you know, he really went through things about my business that I, that I already knew. And he talked to me about how to reinforce those, but he also leaned into a couple of things that I knew would make a difference in my business. Now that I've joined the company, I've realized it wasn't just talk with them yep. that they're serious about and they're helping me partner in my business. And, and the four things that we went over in the interview, I've no, now really started leaning into them on my business and the balance that it's given me in my life and the money that I'm making is so much more. I'm so excited that I sat down and talked to Matt and more importantly joined, you know, Matt's banana brokerage or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, guys, we're still, work, we're still working on that name. <laughs> still trying to find that name. Uh, send us an email. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know, man. I feel like I feel like this is this is a better one. So, um, meaning banana brokerage. Like if you're new and you don't know what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about. Right, Matt. Yeah, Ben. So the next one we're going to talk about could be mm -hmm. 
the scariest word in real estate. Right? <laughs> it is. So everyone, you know, the spooky music. Cue the spooky music. Right. <laughs> Accountability. Right. Right. And so, you know, there, there, there are a lot of brokers out there who feel like, gosh, if, if I've if I impose accountability on some of my agents, then maybe it's going to scare them away. Right. The easiest way to hold someone else accountable is to exemplify accountability. Accountability. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So a lot of people think that whenever they get into uh, they get into real estate, that that uh, being a broker, being in charge. Uh, uh, you know, well, starting off being a salesperson and then being a broker and being in charge, <clears throat> you don't have to be accountable to anyone but yourself. Right. Okay. And, uh, and that's absolutely not true. Right. Okay. Yeah, of course. So absolutely you have to be accountable to yourself. Yep. Right. But, but an agent works for a brokerage. Yes. Okay. So there's certain things that have to be done a certain way, or there's issues for that brokerage mm -hmm. that creates accountability, right? Yes. They have to be accountable to the, the customers and clients. If they're not accountable to the customers and clients, then there's a, then there's absolutely an issue and they don't get those customers and clients to come back. So they're always searching for the next one, which spends three hours of their day smiling a dial instead of right. Okay. So there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different, uh, uh levels and ways that people have to be accountable. So what brokers want to be careful is, I don't want to cross that 1099 line, right? I don't want yeah. to cross that independent contractor line, all, all that kind of stuff. So, so absolutely, you have to find the right balance of when to be accountable. But the best way to, to get the right people in your office that want to be able to win the same way that your brokerage is set up for them to win is by you doing exactly what you just said, exemplifying accountability. Yep. When you say, everybody knows this with kids, right? If you, let me, let me tell you a funny story. Okay. So we were in a, we were in huddle house. It's like waffle house, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I'm so, in huddle house. Uh, okay. So, and, and my son was probably, uh, six or seven, something like that. He was, he was young. So my daughter wasn't even born yet. And we're in there, uh, on, uh, on Sunday getting some, uh, getting some breakfast and, uh, and, and I'm sitting next to him, right. And we're in a, we're in a booth. I'm sitting next to him. Stu's on my side and my, my wife is, is across from us. You know, we're in like a middle booth, you know, so my wife's got her back to another booth and I've got my back to another booth. And uh, I said, Stuart, man, just, just sit down, right? You're going to knock your plate over. Don't do that. And he just out of the blue just goes, what the hell? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, what'd you just say? And before I can say anything else, the lady in the booth behind me leans back and puts her head right next to my head and turns her mouth towards me and says, I bet if you ask him, he'll tell you where he heard that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and I said, damn it, lady, mind your own business. No, I didn't, I didn't say anything. We all just, we all just laughed because we know where he, we know where he heard it. Right. <laughs> so the point is if you, if you want other people to be accountable yeah, and, and you start by keeping your word and doing what you say that you were going to do. And when you can't do that, you clearly communicate it automatically the people around you will, will become and exemplify that. Yeah. Because, because if they see you doing it often enough, they don't want to not be that way. Does everyone out there know this, Ben? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I hope, right? Everyone yeah. Yeah. There, that's right. I think it's common, common knowledge. Absolutely. So why are we talking about it? Because if you want to be a great leader, it cannot be on the back burner. Yeah. If you want to be a great leader, you got to do what you're supposed to do. And it has to be, it has to be on display 10 times more than if you just want to be a great follower. Yeah. If you want to be a great follower, nobody's really paying attention to your, to your accountability a whole lot. Right. Yeah. If you want to be a great leader, everyone's looking at your accountability. No, absolutely. So <clears throat> the next one, right? There's two more. The next one is just was straight up inclusiveness. Yep. You got to prove it constantly. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, you want, you want to define that a little bit for yeah. everybody? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so one of the things that, uh, that brokers sometimes do, and this destroys their, their, uh, perception as a leader <clears throat> is they pick favorites, hmm. right? One person always wins the same award. Right. Yeah. And the broker stands up in the meeting and says, OK, for the 15th month in a row, Betty yeah. Sue Boy, is, one, yeah. right, is it right is the is the top listing agent of whatever. Right. Yeah. I get that. That is what it is. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, but there's other great things that are happening. Yeah. You, you can't just uh, you can't just 
say that you want to be about everyone's win. You can't say that your brokerage is a great place for people to come and win whenever they're winning at things and they're not getting any kind of recognition for it. Yeah. Okay. So if you say, come here and I'm going to help you win, most people, especially in real estate agents, most people are not going to say, you know what? I want to work really hard and never get any recognition for that win. Yeah. That's just not the way they're wired. No matter what they told you on the appointment. Yeah. That's just not the way they're wired. It takes a certain kind of person to be in real estate. And those people are people that appreciate emotional and financial compensation. Yeah. And, and so they have to be getting that. That means you have to include them whenever they're doing those great things. As you, as you do that more and more, as you find the reasons to celebrate with, with things, th- this is not participation trophies, okay? Please right. understand, I'm oh, not a participation absolutely. trophy guy, okay? Yep. If you are out there, I'd love it for you. Go get them, Tiger. But I'm not a participation trophy kind of guy. So I think that people should have to earn it, but when they earn it, they should absolutely be rewarded for it. That means that constantly you have to prove the inclusion of people getting recognition and winning for things. You have to be on the hunt for seeing those things. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, you know, a great analogy of this is like imagine, you know, you're on a uh, or you're the coach of a baseball team, right? And there's just there's just this one kid or you know team 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 player team team teammate that just hits home runs every time they get up there. And like, man, everybody just as soon as they they call you know his or her name, everybody starts cheering. The music is maybe a little bit louder, and uh, and, and it's just like this guy's the greatest thing on the face of the earth. Well. It's easy to say our MVP is this, our MVP is this, but take a look, you know, at everyone else in your office or everyone else on the team. You're gonna see that one, that one player who, you know, maybe they don't even get to play much, but gosh, the culture of that locker room is so sick because that, because that guy or gal is going around what? making <clears throat> sure, like, hey, you did a great, you did a great job. That play was awesome. That listing that you got, man, that is absolutely incredible. And, and, and if, and if that team player, if that, uh, uh, culture guy, we'll call him that right. culture guy walks out the door, man, everybody wonders why. Yeah, exactly. A whole, a whole, whole world of shit can open up. Right. Even if you still got your home run hitter. Right. So the home run hitter, if you don't have anybody else in the team, the maximum runs you're going to get is nine. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have anybody in the outfield, the other team's going to score a hell of a lot more than nine. Yeah, that's right. that's exactly right. So so that means that you you have to find a way of including everyone that's that's contributing and winning and your job as the leader is to find that. Yep, absolutely. And and in a way and another way to do that, the last of the ones we're going to list is by being a connector. Yep. Which is a great way of giving is a great way of giving recognitions. Hey guys, you know, uh, so hey guys, Ben is uh, Ben's the number one agent for the fifteen month fifteenth month in a row on on listings and on and on transactions and everything. King Everybody of real can, estate, you might king say. King of real estate, right? Exactly. Everybody, <laughs> give him a give him a, a round of applause. And uh, and so and so Betty Sue, though I want to I want to point something out with uh, with Betty Sue. You know, this past you know this past week, you know, somebody had to to uh, go out of town unexpectedly, and uh, and as soon as Betty Sue heard about it, you know, she literally jump in and took over everything that was going on with that person so they could focus on what they needed to go out of town for guys that that's really what our office is about yep. our office is about being very productive like Betty like Ben but it's also like about supporting each other and having the cult, right culture like Betty Sue yep. I appreciate both of you guys if you guys have any questions about you know what Betty Sue did and how she and how she helped out you know just reach out to her she said she said she's happy to help she's happy to help with contracts or whatever it is and and if you want to learn more about listings Ben you said you would help people understand how to get more listings right yep so if you have any questions about that absolutely reach out to them and so now what I'm doing is I'm connecting and as a leader that's my job as yeah. a leader, it's my job to know what Ben is good at and, and to know what Ben wants to help with. And it's my job to know what Betty Sue is good at and what Betty Sue wants to help with. But it's also my job to know the people that are delinquent in other things, the people that are, that are falling behind or the people that are not as good at it or the people that, that don't have that skill set or don't have that mindset. It's my job to try to get them connected with the people that do so that everyone grows forward. Yeah. As a leader, that's what I have to make sure that that's what I have to make sure that I'm doing. Can you, through democratized authority, like we talked about, can you, can you hand some of that off? Yes, you can. But ultimately, people are going to look to you as the broker owner. They're going to look to you as the person that, that should have offered that solution. If it's not going a certain way, it's coming back to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to summarize this, guys, because I was just thinking about this. This all really comes full circle. 
right? So let, let, let's use that meeting, that well, that sales meeting or, or, or staff meeting, awards meeting, whatever you want to call it as an example, right? When you're up there, you're clearly communicating, right? Man, so-and-so, you know, maybe hits a bunch of home runs. You're clearly communicating that, um, you know, so-and-so helped on this last tra- last transaction and just is such um, such a team player in the entire, entire office. Not As soon as you say that, everyone else is in the room is going to say, Yes, so and so is right. a great a great team player. So there you start getting those testimonials for your culture. Um, you're holding yourself accountable to look at each one of the people inside of your office and say that person has great great qualities that you know I I need to make yep. sure that I recognize. Well, guess what that's going to do? That's going to make everyone else realize that well, that person does have good stuff and I need to make sure that I'm telling, I'm telling them as well, right? 100%. They're going to start holding themselves accountable. Of course, that's going to make everyone, um, you know, feel more included and just have an, an inclusive culture. And, 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 and the whole thing is connecting everyone together and making 100%. sure that why would you want to go anywhere else? We're so full of amazing people. Absolutely. Right. You really are the king of flow. I am the king of flow, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Um, I have already ordered my high top throne and a scepter uh, and a scepter, right? Just long enough <laughs> right to hit me, right. hit you in the head. Well, before we get to that action item, guys, um, wherever you're listening to this, whether it be from your castle or iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, any of those platforms, make sure you hit that follow button. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside of you. Get notified every time we drop an episode. Um, if you want to see our kingdom, go to prospectboomerang.com uh, and see what Matt and I have uh, to help you guys grow your business, no matter what phase or what stage of business that you are in. Matt. Yeah, Ben. Hit us up with an action item. So uh, so this one's probably going to be pretty, I would think, if you've been listening to the whole podcast and you didn't skip to the end for the action item, you probably, <laughs> uh, you probably uh, already thought of this one, right? Y- you need to make sure you continue your leadership training, right? You mm-hmm. need to continue doing the things, you know, figuring out what that is. And, and this isn't for, a, for an I told you so situation. But the better that the more that you're you're learning and leaning into that leadership, the more things that are going to come up in that education that you're going to be able to impart on other people. Yes. The more you're going to be able to help other people, and and as you do that, everybody just uh, everybody just wins more. And even if you're not you know if you're not somebody that wants to be known as the leader, and you're kind of you know uh, leading from behind, right? You know, or you're or you're getting out of the way, and you're letting other people do some of the stuff, or you're democratizing authority and everything. The better you get at leading, yep. meaning that you continue that education, the easier it is for other people to feel comfortable that your leadership is what's helping the growth happen. That's what's going to make everybody else lean into it. Yep, absolutely. Well, I was leaning into it, Matt. Well, good, Ben. Right. I just lo- I just love everything that we that that that, that we talk about. Right. right. I know that every, all of our listeners love everything that that we talk about as well. That's why they keep coming back listening. Yep. But we want you guys to know that we do this for so many reasons. And uh, I don't know what it is when like a king makes turns something into a law. It's, it's a decree. Yeah. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> well, there's one thing that we decree <laughs> more than anything else. And that's why we do this podcast. Matt, tell them why that is. Because we just want to be part of, the, of thine win. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs>